In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to turn your artwork into a pattern for rhinestones using the software, like this example I have here. As I zoom in you can see the pattern I have made. You can apply these patterns to garments such as t-shirts and caps and really anything that is heat resistant. For information about which medias and tapes to use and where to purchase your rhinestones, please do a search online and you will find suppliers who will assist you further. On page 2, I have a simple example on a regular t-shirt and will show you how to create an outline of this word using the rhinestone module. To do this, click on the text and go up to and click on the plugins drop-down box and select rhinestone module. In here you will see the text has had the default settings applied to it. In this area are all the regular zoom tools, which you can use to zoom in or zoom out, including a preview of what the finished pattern will look like. In this area are settings for the size and shape of the stones you wish to use for your project. Clicking here displays a set of regular stone shapes which you can select from. Clicking here displays a list of standard stone sizes that your supplier will be able to provide you with. Working with standard size stones will make your projects easier to do. In this case I will use SS2. Below here we can set the pattern to shaded and by clicking on the color preview and view mode I can see what the finished artwork will look like on a black t-shirt. I can also set the size manually, but as mentioned it is best to work with standard stone sizes. Here I can set the bleed, which is the additional area the module will extend past the stone's default size. For example, you can set the bleed to say 0.01 of an inch so the stones more easily fall into the pattern as you brush them in. In this area you can see how many stones you will need to do the artwork, and can enter how much you pay for each stone to then know what the cost of the stones will be. When you are happy with your settings, click accept and your pattern will be applied to your artwork and be ready to be cut out. You can change the color of the pattern easily to see what it will look like in other colors and view in wireframe as well. Next I will show you how to do a fill pattern for your rhinestones project and then add an outline. On page 3 I have a picture of a butterfly. Again I'll select it and open it in the rhinestone module. This time I click the fill options tab here and click fill path and as you can see the artwork is filled with stones. Next I can set the type of fill I wish to use and I have three options from this drop down box, namely grid which as you can see places the stones in a grid. Next is hexagonal which you can see how this appears. And also scanline which uses another approach to fill the artwork for a different effect. In this case, I will use hexagonal. Below these options are outline. This option sets the physical area the stones are bound to. So by increasing the outline I'll need more stones and by decreasing the outline I'll need less stones, with both of these significantly altering the appearance of my finished pattern. In this case I'll leave it negative to allow for the outline I'll add later. The next option is X offset, this sets how far apart the stones are from each other, or in other words how far they are offset. The more offset the less stones are required, and conversely the less offset the more stones you will need. Again, both of these will significantly alter the appearance of the finished pattern. In this area, you can set the relative position of the X and Y coordinates of the stones. This allows you to tweak the final appearance of the pattern by shifting the stones either left or right and or up and down. The final result will depend on the artwork itself, so it is worth trying different positions to see which works best. You can also set the screen angle. This effectively rotates all the stones in either a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Again, adjusting the screen angle will significantly alter the appearance of the finished pattern. When you are happy with your settings, click accept and your pattern will be applied to your artwork. Now, I can add an outside path to the same artwork. I must be careful to select the original butterfly shape to do this. Next I open the rhinestone module. Firstly I'll select a different shape stone and make it larger, because I want to show you how rotation works. Next I click the fill options tab. If I click no rotation, you can see the stones no longer rotate with the curve shape. 
In other words, they are no longer perpendicular to the path of the butterfly. I will now reset the stone shape and size for the final pattern and come back to the Fill Options tab and uncheck Distribute. You can see that when unchecked, the stones do not evenly distribute around the shape, while they may be mathematically correct they are not as visually appealing. Again, the results very much depend on the artwork you are using. Now I have the settings how I want them, I click Accept and your pattern will be applied to the artwork which now has a fill plus an outline. I can also try using different colors to see what looks good using this artwork and pattern. Finally let me show you what the artwork looks like using different shaped stones. Here on page 4 I have a truck shape. In this case we can set the stones to a star shape at this size. And when complete I can zoom into the pattern, and you can see the cool effect this has. Rhinestones are another great example of the many types of things you can make using the software. And that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching.